This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, you're going to learn how to do an advanced mixture problem. And in a few short moments, we're going to get started. But I just want to let you know that in order to be successful with this lesson, you do have to know how to solve a system of equations. It's going to come up today. You could use a calculator. Um, you could use substitution. You could use uh, elimination. Many ways to do it. Um, but you got to know how to do that before we get started. All right, let's get going. So we're going to take a look at a problem which I've placed up here at the top of the screen, and I have a table below. The table is going to help us organize the information. So as we look at the word problem, we peel out the given information, we can place it in this table. Now, um, the table has been arranged in a certain order. These columns are not just randomly thrown together. So I placed into the first column the weight uh, in pounds. Then the second column I've got the price is in dollars or price per pound. And then I have in the last column the actual cost. Um, and I've arranged them in that order for a reason. And you'll see that in a moment. I've got a local grocery store wants to make its own trail mix. So what is it going to do? It's going to mix some candy. It's going to mix some peanuts. It's going to create this mix, which is going to be tasty. So the goal is to make a 30-pound batch that costs $4 per pound. Okay, so that's what they want to produce. Maybe they've done some studies and they realize $4 per pound is a good price for trail mix. Um, people snap it up at that price. All right, so what are they using? They're using $5 per pound candy and they're using two dollars per pound peanuts so they're using expensive candy and cheap peanuts and they're gonna put that together to make this four dollars per pound mix alright so let's talk about how to now fill the table and deal with this information since there's candy and peanuts I'm gonna place that into the table I'm gonna say there's candy is one ingredient and peanuts is another ingredient. So what are we going to do? We're going to now take this information and fill it in. There's also um, a larger amount here to consider. There's the batch, the total batch. In other words, I'm going to say that is the total mixture, right? Once we put it together. So here are our ingredients, candy and peanuts, and together we're going to combine them into a total mixture. All right, so we've got five pounds five dollars that is per pound candy so I'm gonna put that in the price It's five dollars per pound candy and there's two dollars per pound peanuts that takes care of those two pieces of information the goal is to make 30 pound batch that costs four dollars per pound now we're talking about the total so I want that total to be four dollars per pound and uh, 30 pounds of it and there you go there's the weight the total weight is going to be 30 pounds when we're done mixing it. All right, so far so good. Now we're really done with all the critical information that was placed in the table. You notice that we we're only given four numbers to deal with, but there's another clue right here at the end. It says how many pounds of candy and how many pounds of peanuts are needed. In other words, we don't know. I don't know what the weight of candy that's going to be needed. Now, algebra is very arrogant. When you don't know something, you'd say, well, as a great place to put in an X which stands for that unknown so I'm going to make the declaration that we're going to use X pounds of candy I'm then also going to declare that we're going to use some peanuts and I can't use an X here because if I did I'm going to assume that we're using the same amount for candy and peanuts which would be a bad mistake it could be that they're going to be the same but uh, odds are uh, they're not, and I'd like to leave the opportunity for these two to be different quantities, which is likely the case. So I'm going to place Y to stand for the weight of the peanuts that we're going to use. Now, earlier I told you that I arranged these columns in a certain order, and I did, because I'm placing the pounds in the first column, price per pounds here. When you multiply pounds times price I'm gonna just put price per pound you're gonna notice here that uh, if you multiply two fractions the pounds are gonna cancel 
and you're going to be left with the price or in this case we call that specifically a cost that's going to be a cost so I'm arranging it so that I can multiply across the table to get the cost of each item so if I take x times 5 I'm going to get 5x if I take y times 2 I'm going to get 2y if I take 30 times 4 I'm going to get 120 and there you go so this is the uh, cost for the candy this is the cost for the peanuts and this is the cost for the total mixture all right so we're now going to use this table to further the explanation so if we use some common sense we now should be able to use the contents of this table to help us solve the problem so look at the first column here when you look at the first column we know that the weight of the candy and the weight of the peanuts those weights have to add up to be 30 because that's the total amount so if we really think about this we have an equation right here we know that x plus y has to be equal to 30 whatever x and y are they're gonna add up to be 30 now if we look at the last column we know that the cost of the candy the cost of the peanuts you know when we take the two costs they have to add up to be 120 because that is the total value of this mix once we're done putting them together so in other words 5x is the candy 2y is the peanuts and 120 is the total so really those two columns are very helpful because it allows us to form this system of equations so now with this is system of equations you have to solve it and at the beginning of the video I told you you have to know how to do this now many ways to do it you can multiply the top by equation by negative 2 add them uh, you could use reduced row echelon form with your calculator which I suggest you do it's probably the fastest way to go and you can use those on many standardized tests you could use these graphing calculators so I did this a little bit earlier and I found out that X out of the calculator comes 20 and out of the calculator I get Y is 10 okay now what does that mean when you're done with these problems you really do have to explain what that X and Y values represent um, if you start a problem with a word problem then you really should explain what the answer is in terms of that word problem okay so I know that X stands for the weight of the candy so I'm going to use 20 pounds of candy okay then I know I'm going to use 10 pounds of peanuts and that's how I would explain in the end if I was going to now write a conclusion I would say in order to make this 30 pound batch that costs four dollars per pound I'm gonna use 20 pounds of candy and 20 sorry 10 pounds of peanuts there you go there's your solution alright so make sure you go back to mathguide.com check out our more than 200 text lessons more than 200 interactive quizzes and more than 200 uh, instructional videos okay so take care have a great day with all this talk of trail mix I think I'm kinda hungry now and I wanna go on a hike <laughs>